Sean here. I want to talk about the hidden reason why your knife is either performing amazing and why it's probably not performing that great at all, and that's going to be geometry. We first start getting into knives, we start looking at just all the different steels, and we're trying to find the best knife based on what the steel is. After a while, though, you start to realize that maybe it's not all about the steel, maybe it's about the heat treatment. So then you start focusing on that. But then when you get so many knives and you start sharpening and experiencing them all, you start to realize the real hidden reason why the knife is either performing awesome or it's performing not is because of geometry. And geometry is interesting because you need certain geometries for certain uses. So this knife right here has a much thicker geometry because it's made to be more robust. You know, if I tried to push this knife into a different role, such as in the kitchen, it's going to be horrible. It's just too thick. It's not going to give me a quality cut that I'm looking for when it comes to processing food. Conversely, something that's amazing in the kitchen, like this lightsaber right here, it's going to be awesome in the kitchen. It's going to process food and give me the quality cuts I'm looking for. If I pressed it into that nice roll right there, it's going to be absolutely horrible. And I know it's like, hey, Captain Obvious alert. Like, we know that. But here's something you probably didn't realize. A lot of people, when they look at geometry, they get focused on the spine thickness, how thick we are at the spine, and then how many degrees per side we are on the bevel there. So this knife right here looks like it's actually a lightsaber, but the problem is this probably doesn't cut as good as your out-of-the-box paramilitary two. And the reason why I say that is because I've actually sharpened this knife enough that we've decreased in height. And why that's detrimental is the fact that a knife, if you look at it, is actually a wedge. All right, knife makers are wedge makers. So you see we're thicker up here and we're thinner down here. So as we sharpen up your knife, it starts to shrink and get thicker and thicker. So while I have probably like a 12 degree per side bevel on there, that's kind of just a consequence. I have to do that so it'll try to cut similar to how it cut out of the box. But no matter how far I drop it, it's still gonna have such an abrupt change to a thicker wedge that it's never gonna cut the way that it could. So just a little food for thought there. So I have a Benchmade 940, and those of you that own the Benchmade 940, you know it's definitely an awesome knife. It's like the ultimate blue collar, like just working man's knife. Very premium though too, they're very expensive, but they're awesome blades. The problem is they're very, very thick, but they kind of have to be. They're designed for that guy that's kind of using it for like a screwdriver, this and that. There's something kind of cool about it. It's kind of like a sharpened uh, pry bar in a way. Don't pry with it, but yeah, it, that's kind of what the idea they're going for. But I was never satisfied with the edge I got off this knife, and that's for a lot of bench maids, which is why I only have one bench maid and, and mostly spider coils is because spider coil focuses more on edge geometry and, and you know, slice your grinds over durability. So I had to go ahead and I had to re-grind this blade because my bevels were just getting so huge that I just was not able to really enjoy this knife. So I thinned that out. You can see the micro bevel I have right there. And don't focus too much on the numbers here, but I'll show you guys kind of with my digital calipers. We're about, if I go right behind that micro bevel, about 20 thousandths behind that edge there. There's a slight convexity to it. I mean, it's not the sexiest regrind, but I did it myself. And the thing is, now I've got a knife that cuts the way I want. It's gonna be incredibly easy to sharpen. I don't have to remove that much material to make it cut, but it's never gonna be as durable as it once was. Okay, it's never going to be, you know, a hard use, I guess, like it was out of the box. Now it's going to be more of a knife that I like. I'm more of a, a precision user. I like stuff that cuts really well and sharpens good and all that stuff. So, really, I'm saying that geometry is the real hidden reason why your knife is either performing amazing and, and why it is performing not. But really, all that stuff is related. So you can't have a thin geometry on a knife if you don't have, you know, a good heat treatment on that blade. And, you know, there's certain steels, you know, getting back to the steel, that can basically be tougher at higher hardnesses than cheaper steels, okay? So you can have more capabilities for thinner edge knives with uh, steels that can take higher hardnesses but still maintain some of that stability. Uh, and then also, lastly, it depends on preference, user preference, and what the actual job of the knife is for. So if you're selecting a knife and you want like the highest performance knife for whatever task you're looking for, you got to get task specific. I can barely say that word. Task specific. You got to get very specific with your task. And then you're going to be able to juice all the performance out of a knife. Otherwise, if you try to make a knife do a variety of different things, it's not going to be good at any of that stuff. It's going to be a jack of all trades, master of none. That's kind of the idea with a survival knife is a survival knife is supposed to be kind of a jack of all trades, but you know, at a consequence to the cutting quality, and it's trying to be unbreakable, this and that. But 
Yeah, so you just got to decide what kind of user you are. If you're somebody that's a little bit more careless with your tools, or if you're somebody that's uh, kind of more on the you know precision side, you like the cutting quality and stuff like that. You know, speaking of one-trick ponies, that's why I have this knife on here. This is a Asuba. That's a Japanese kitchen knife, and Asuba literally translates to thin blade. And so this knife right here is incredibly thin behind the edge. It's probably the, one of the thinnest blades I have behind an edge besides like just a straight up razor blade. And so behind the edge there, if I come down to that micro bevel, it's reading seven thousandths on there. And you can see, you guys have heard about that Murray Carter edge test where he tests the kind of uh, resilience of the steel. You need a really thin knife to do that. I've seen some people talk about how, oh, you can do that test or whatnot on old knives. You really need a thin blade. Because you can see right here, that's my thumbnail kind of deforming the steel and it comes back. So what that test does is it shows you if you have the elasticity and resilience of your steel. If it's too soft, it doesn't bounce back. If it's too hard, then it just chips. So that's kind of how that test works. That test doesn't work, though, on, uh, on thicker blades. Even something thin like your, you know... Police 4, it's just not, it's not going to work. I'm going to get it in the light there. You can't tell. because It's just still too thick. We're about 20 to 30 thousandths behind the edge here. Just just too thick, you know, too thick to test on a on just regular knife or a regular, regular pocket knife. You need something super, super thin to really test that capability. But I hope this was somewhat helpful for you guys out there as far as talking about geometry. To be honest, it's a really, really huge subject, and it's really tough to cover in a, a shorter video. And I don't want to make a 20-minute video about it. And yeah, there's definitely going to be questions if you watch this video. And go ahead and leave that for me down in the comment section. If you think I missed something too, yeah, go ahead and share that with us as well. I'm very, uh, very open to uh, you know your guys' comments and stuff like that. And I appreciate you guys watching all these videos too. So take it easy. I hope you guys have a good day. All right, we'll talk later.